This is the Stray's Ice Temple, and this is the Piglin's Nether Ship, and these are 20 new Minecraft structures. According to the YouTube overlords, the fastest anyone's ever subscribed to the channel is one and a half seconds. So if you want to beat that, let's put 1.5 seconds on the clock and start the timer now. And hey, even if you subscribed after the buzzer, it means a ton and enjoy the video. With these oasises, oasi, oasises. Anyway, with these plots of water and vegetation, you've just found a perfect place for your next desert base. The water provides a perfect way to grow your crops and also, you know, not die of thirst. And in my humble opinion, it's way nicer to stumble across one of these when you're looking for water than yet another one of those useless desert wells. Instead of a regular village on the surface, check out this one underground. Now it might be a little hard to find them, but once you do, I'm sure the trades that you find will be well worth it. And here, we'd have a bit of refuge amongst the dangers of the dark depths. Just make sure that no zombies get too close, since here, they can spawn all day long, instead of just at nighttime like the surface. But if you use some of your newfound iron to make them a golem, this could be a safe place to sleep, and it gives you a reason to spend your coal and redstone on the trading market. This structure is going to help you find the other structures that we talk about in the video. With these randomly generated camps, they spawn different maps inside of them, that show the location of different points of interest. This way, you won't have to wander around aimlessly to hopefully stumble across a rare structure. We should help you find something as rare as the Pillager Factory. These Pillager Factories are one of the new rare structures in Minecraft. And this is how the Pillagers refine all of the materials that they get for their woodland mansions and outposts. Unlike the mansions though, these factories actually have some kind of valuable loot worth finding inside. And you'll know that those chests must be pretty valuable, because you'll find quite a few Illagers standing guard, making sure that you don't take it. And how did the pillagers get all those valuables? Well, these mine shafts off of the answer. And they're sure to be filled to the brim with amazing loot, so it's worth it to go explore. But the tight spaces will make even the most experienced to be Minecraft pros struggle against any of these villagers. Keep an eye out for these obsidian spikes in the nether. While they might seem unassuming from afar, when you reach the top, you'll find they house some seriously valuable stuff. But watch out, because they can sometimes come with a blaze spawner to give you trouble. But once that's taken care of, this can be a great spot for a base that's safe against gas, and it'll give you enough obsidian for a portal home, in case it didn't bring enough. But before we leave the nether, we should be sure to check out one of these crazy nether ships. You see, these have been used by the piglins to travel over the massive open spaces in the nether, and it probably helps them to have some chance against those gas, since those will constantly destroy everything they see. But if you're able to bridge to one of these ships, you'll be able to find some worthwhile loot inside. And after you grab all that gold, I'm sure you'll have no problem finding any piglins who are willing to trade with you. Or better yet, why not take the gold that you found from the nether ships and bring it to this new piglin village? I mean, it's a lot better than trying to barter inside of Bastion Remnant, because at least here, you don't have to worry about any piglin brutes coming by and ruining your speedrun. And while these piglin villagers will only accept you if you're wearing a piece of gold armor, that's a small price to pay for the kind of stuff they can give you. And just imagine how cool it would be if the piglin villages ended up getting their own gold golems, just like how the regular villages have an iron one. Isn't it weird how villagers choose to live in the desert, but not the Badlands? Well, now they do. And here, it makes for a really cool aesthetic, and gives you an extra reason to adventure into the Badlands. And now, we can set up a quarry for getting our terracotta blocks, without having to leave our civilization behind. And trust me, an occupied village is so much better than just another abandoned Badlands mineshaft. And, if you're lucky, that village might even be next door to the new Badlands temple. Which, aside from a fresh red sandstone aesthetic, this also offers treasure just as good as the desert variant. Which you can either keep for yourself, or trade with the villagers. After all, they're literally next door. And if we get anything in the game like the Baron Isles mod's interpretation, I think both of these structures would be well worth a reason to visit the Badlands, rather than just collecting some more terracotta. In 1.18, we have end ships, and in the future, we might have end city shipwrecks. With these, we don't get the same kind of loot, but what they lack in the elytra, they make up for with maps. And with one of these maps, we can find our way to our own end city. So if you don't already have an elytra, and you're struggling to still find one, this would at least help to make sure that you're bridging in the right direction. Because truly, getting that first elytra is always the hardest to get. So anything that'll make it easier, it's a welcome change. This structure comes with its very own mob. Meet the Conjurer. He's a magician illager that hosts his very own theater deep inside of the roof forest biome. And while he might seem whimsical, don't get it twisted. Because if you get close, you use all kinds of different magic items, be that bouncy balls, playing cards, and even rabbits to deal damage. But you'll still want to defeat him, since then he'll drop his magician's hat, which lets you ward off any bad omen effects. Plus, it can be dyed for a new form of armor, which is very spiffy. And 
while you're in the dark forest, let's show off your new magician's hat to the fairies. That's right, here we've got a fairy village that spawned right amidst all the scary dreariness in a roof forest biome. And I'm sure that both you and your villagers would much prefer this rather than yet another boring plains biome. And the designs of these houses are sure to make your friends jealous. So why not make yourself at home? And you know what? Move the whole village in here. I'm sure there's room. Consider yourself lucky if you happen to find one of these at the start of your game. Spawning by an abandoned quarry is a lucky break. This thing is like an open ravine, but without the headache of getting down. And plus, this would finally give a unique structure to spawn in our mountains. And who knows, maybe you'll even get your first pickaxe in one of the chests up top, which should come in handy because at the bottom of every one of these quarries, you'll find a mine shaft. And it'd be a shame not to explore that. And hey, at least now we have an answer for how those mine shafts got started in the first place, since there's never really been a clear way up to the surface. And if we go higher up the mountain from that quarry, we can find our way to the new abandoned cabin. These things are native to the snowy peaks from the 1.18 world generation. And since it is abandoned, I think you can safely help yourself to the loot inside. I mean, an iron axe and some mutton is nothing to sneeze at. And while it looks a little worse for wear now, if you clean out the cobwebs and snow, this can more than make for a starter base. Just make sure that if you sleep there, you patch up some of the holes in the roof and floors. These villagers have decided to build a village right on the swamp. And while the swamp has historically been a boring biome, with the new 1.19 wild update, it's set to get a lot more lively. I mean, except for fireflies. So I'd understand why villagers would want to live here. And plus, there's already a swamp villager skin variant, so it just makes sense. Let's just hope that the iron golems can do enough to keep the nearby witches away. And the swamps are the only secret variant that's in the game. But in fact, Mojang also has a secret skin in there for jungle villagers as well. So why don't they get their own village? With beautiful tree houses that give you easy access to all the different homes, there really is something to see here. And I mean, the vines are already nature's ladder, so it's easy enough to get to. But the villagers they AI isn't exactly the best, so just keep an eye out, otherwise you might end up finding more of these on the ground than you do up in the trees. And if you're planning on living here, maybe building a fence to keep the villagers safely up there, that isn't a bad idea. Picture this, what if dungeons were bigger? Well, now they're mega, and mega doesn't even really cover it, since these dungeons consist of many different floors and rooms, and each room that you find will be filled with more and more valuable loot, getting only better as you delve deeper in. And if you're someone who likes to make mob farms, this might be the place for you, since you'll find a different mob spawner in virtually every room, which can be annoying to clear out at first, but if you manage it, you could get some huge results. And some might even call them Leviathan. And speaking of Leviathan, look at the size of this Leviathan skeleton. Now, if we take a close look inside the skeleton, you'll see lots of husks spawning inside, which will actually drop sand when killed, which is really helpful if you ever run out of sand in the desert. But that does actually happen sometimes, since lots of players can get carried away with their builds. And farming husks inside a Leviathan then sure beats building another complicated sand duper in the end. And to further help with your itch for farms, this stray infested ice temple will be right up your alley. Not only does this biome get a now long overdue structure, but the strays that spawn here actually drop ice blocks on death. So you can save your silk touch picks and farm all the ice that you need for your nether highway. And while it's definitely similar to the one that you find in the desert, at least it's something. And after you clear out all the strays, this should give you the chance to be the real king of the ice biome. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. so. See if they're right and have a good one, all right?